If it takes a derivative to go down the ladder of physics, then it must take an integral to go up the ladder of physics. And that's exactly what it takes. So, consider this problem. Our acceleration is constant. By the way, it's negative 9.81 meters per second squared, it's gravity. And if we have initial velocity v naught and initial time x naught, let's go from constant acceleration up to our position function using these two initial values. Let's get started. The antiderivative of acceleration gives us velocity. And so our velocity is equal to the antiderivative of a with respect to t. That's just a t plus c. Because when we take an antiderivative, we have to include the plus c. Now let's solve for c using our initial value of velocity. So we'll plug v naught into v of t, and we'll plug zero into t. a times zero is zero, plus c gives us c. So c is v naught. And this gives us our velocity function, a t plus v naught. Now let's go up to position. The antiderivative of velocity gives us position. So here we go. The antiderivative of velocity is position, that's x of t. The antiderivative of at with respect to t is 1 half at squared. The antiderivative of v naught is v naught t. And we have to include the plus c because we have to. Now our initial position is x naught. So let's plug x naught into x and we'll plug 0 into t. 1 half times a times 0 is 0. v naught times 0 is 0 and so c is equal to x naught. And so our position function is x of t is equal to 1 half a t squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And there we go. Let's do some problems with actual numbers. The acceleration of a particle moving along the x-axis at time t is given by a of t is equal to 6t minus 2. If the velocity is 25 when t is equal to 3, so v of 3 is 25, and the position is 10 when t equals 1, so x of 1 is equal to 10, we want to find the actual position function. Well, here we go. We know that acceleration is 6t minus 2. That means that our velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. The antiderivative of 6t is 3t squared. The antiderivative of negative 2 is negative 2t. And this is plus c. We can now plug in our initial condition that 25 is equal to 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 minus 2 times 3 is 6 plus c. 27 minus 6 is 21 and 25 minus 21 is 4. So c is equal to 4 here. That means that our velocity function, v of t, is equal to 3t squared minus 2t plus 4. Now let's find our position function. Our position function is the antiderivative of our velocity function. The antiderivative of 3t squared is t cubed. The antiderivative of negative 2t is negative t squared. The antiderivative of 4 is 4t, and don't forget the plus c. And now let's solve for c. We know that x of 1 is equal to 10, so we'll plug 10 into our position and 1 into t. So we have 1 minus 1 plus 4 plus c. 1 minus 1 cancels out. 10 minus 4 is 6, and so c is equal to 6. And so, our position function is 
x of t is equal to t cubed minus t squared plus 4t plus 6. So we went from acceleration to position knowing the initial velocity and the initial position. Let's do one more. A particle moves along the x-axis so that at any time t greater than or equal to zero, the acceleration of the particle is a of t equals e to the negative 2t. If at t equals zero, the velocity is 5 halves, and at t equals zero, its position is 17 over 4, then its position is given by which function? Well, if a is e to the negative 2t, then that means that our velocity is the antiderivative of e to the negative 2t. And the antiderivative of e to the negative 2t is negative 1 half e to the negative 2t plus c. Let's plug in our initial condition, which is at t equals 0, our velocity is 5 over 2. So 5 over 2 is equal to negative one-half e to the zero plus c. Of course, e to the zero is just one, so we can add one-half to both sides, and so that means that c is equal to six over two, which is three. So our velocity function is equal to negative one-half e to the negative two t plus three. Now, let's find our position function. The position is the antiderivative of velocity. And so position, x of t, we have to find the antiderivative of negative one-half e to the negative 2t plus 3. To do that, we can pull out the one-half, the negative one-half, so we have negative one-half times the integral of e to the negative 2t dt and the antiderivative of 3 is just 3t and of course we can add a plus c in here as well. I'm doing all of this of course to make this a bit simpler to to view. The antiderivative of e to the negative 2t is negative one-half e to the negative 2t, but negative one-half times negative one-half is positive one-fourth e to the negative 2t plus 3t plus c. So here is our position function. And of course we can now plug in our initial condition which is that at time t equals zero our position is 17 over 4. So 17 over 4 is equal to 1 over 4 times e to the 0 is just 1 over 4. Plug 0 into t here, that goes away, and this is plus c. So c is equal to 17 over 4 minus 1 over 4, that's 16 over 4, which is just 4. And so our position function is x of t is equal to 1 fourth e to the negative 2t plus 3t plus 4. And there it is. Gone from acceleration to position.